Hello dear chess friends, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and you're welcome to the series of lessons dedicated to essentials of bishop and games. In this lesson we're going to finish the discussion of the most important theoretic positions for opposite colored bishop and games. So we can see that white has connected past pawns, so pair of connected past pawns is a great power in any sort of endgames, especially in opposite colored bishop endgames, because the chances to win the game are seriously reduced, so these endgames tend to be drawish, and well, the pair of connected past pawns seriously increases these chances. Why? Because pawns when they are connected, move into the promotion squares, simply protect each other. It is also very important to understand how to move these pawns correctly. Because, for instance, a careless f6 move here leads to complete blockade after king f7, and uh, as we can see, pawn f6 is blockaded forever. Why? Because king occupies light square, so it is not possible to force this king away. White has a bishop of a different color, so it controls dark squares. And uh, square e6, a square of the possible movement of the e5 pawn, is controlled twice by black's king from f7 and bishop from a2. So that the march of the king to d6 square makes no sense makes no difference because white can't make progress. So bishop simply controls e6 square and that's it. Game is drawish. Also the opposite idea to start with e6 which is pretty cool and quite efficient for any other sort of position. Here simply doesn't work. So it is a correct idea of moving the pawns this way occupying squares of the color of opponent's bishop so that your bishop can simply kick opponent's king away from the way of your pawn. So after e6 we can see the next move will be either bishop h4 or bishop b4 checking the king and white makes uh, real progress. But the point here is that since we have very low material Black can simply take the pawn on e6 with the bishop, and after f takes e6 and king takes e6, white runs out of winning material, so it is a draw. But if in such a situation, when you have a pair of connected passed pawns, you also have other pawns on the board, probably this e6 move will be just enough. So the point is to remember the method of promoting your pawns. So you have to occupy squares of the color of opponent's bishop so that your bishop will simply break opponent's blockade right so if you have a dark squared bishop you have to occupy light squares with your pawns so that opponent's king will occupy dark squares so that your bishop will be able to check that king and to break the blockade so that you will make a progress so in such a situation as we can see this simple movement of the pawn is not enough because of the low material so opponent has a chance to take the pawn on e6 so our winning plan might be connected only with controlling e6 square somehow with the king so that we'll have a chance to ensure the movement of the pawn to e6 and we will try to make a progress so to do this, uh, we have to occupy either f6 or d6 with our king. But at the moment, we can see that opponent's king occupies e7, controlling both d6 and f6. So we need to clarify the position of the king with the help of the check. And after that, it will be clear where to maneuver our king. And we have two possibilities. They are bishop b4 and bishop h4. And appears that there is a difference, a serious one between two methods. So if bishop goes to b4, then king simply goes to f7. Now we can see that we can occupy only d6 square with the king. And when the king starts maneuvering towards that square, bishop goes to b1, attacking f5 pawn. So that f6 leads to a simple draw that we already discussed, a complete blockade of white's pawns. So the only chance for white to try to win is to play e6, but after that king goes to f6 and white can't save his pair of pawns, so one of the pawns drops. After e7, king goes to f7 
and after let's say king e5 it is a simple draw because of the blockade otherwise if white doesn't play e7 in this position as i said before black simply takes on f5 and that's it so with the one pawn it's not possible to win the opposite colored bishop ending it's clear so e7, king f7, king e5, bishop c2, let's say f6. And now, again, the same pattern, just controlling the square of the promotion. King occupies a very solid blockading position. It's not possible for white to make a progress. So after understanding all these lines, so f6, e6, and bishop b4, we can make a conclusion that probably only bishop h4 gives white winning chances and yes it's true so after bishop h4 check what to do if uh, king goes to let's say f7 just like in the previous example now our bishop controls very important f6 square so that this maneuver of the king towards d6 becomes really efficient so now if let's say bishop b1 attacking f5 white simply plays e6 check and king can't occupy f6 square which is very important because now we don't have a problem with protecting f5 after king goes away our king simply goes to e5 and we made a great progress so the rest is not that hard to do so our pawns simply keep moving towards promotion squares the same way so we try to occupy squares of uh, light color and to break the blockading activities of our opponent with the help of our bishop so what is going on if after king d4, let's say the bishop stays on this diagonal. So our king goes towards d6 square and it's not possible to prevent this maneuver. So only bishop c2 can be played here, but same e6 check. After king goes away, we can see we no longer have this king e5 move protecting f5 pawn. But in this situation, we can just uh, continue movement of our pawns with a great efficiency. So f6 check. King goes to g6 let's say f7 now again the same method just occupying light squares instead of dark squares so e7 would have been a serious mistake leading to a complete blockade so here there is no blockade f8 is the threat and after king goes to g7 bishop simply goes to e7 ensuring the promotion of the pawn f7 next move so this also wins and finally, what happens after king to d7 after bishop h4 check? So now we have uh, f6 square to occupy with our king so that we start the maneuver. Now it's even easier because our king will have the connection with the f5 pawn. So black has no counter plan connected with attacking our f5 pawn, which is very nice. Bishop goes to f7, king goes to g5, king goes to e7 preventing king f6 but we have the maneuver of king h6 first and then after king goes away king goes to g7 attacking the bishop and finally next move is king f6 so white made everything to get to f6 square and to ensure e6 move but what is next so bishop c4 black has nothing better than just to stay and wait e6 check king goes to e5 now king goes to e5 simply ensuring the movement of the other pawn bishop goes to e2 f6 now there is a threat of playing f7 and black has to prevent that with the help of bishop h5 and now we can see that well our task is just to disturb this bishop somehow to challenge it to ensure the promotion of our pawns so king goes to f5 king goes to g5 attacking the bishop so bishop has to go to e8 to remain in this diagonal. Otherwise, we just play f7 winning the game. And now we have to maneuver our pieces again because uh, we don't have a chance to support the f6 pawn with the help of maneuver of the king. So g7, as you can see, is controlled. But we have a chance to create a position of the tuk-tuk. So bishop e1 to check the king. After king g8, bishop goes to b4. And as we can see, Black is forced to move either the bishop or the king, and in both cases, it leads to the movement of the f pawn with the further f8 queen. And white wins here. So black can't keep the situation of controlling f7 square with both the king and the bishop. And white wins. So after king h6, if finally king goes to f8, 
then white wins almost the same way so e6 bishop e8 f6 creating already a threat of f7 if uh, bishop goes away from this diagonal and if bishop goes to a4 there is a maneuver of the bishop to the diagonal a3 f8 to attack opponent's king and after king g8 the same took swung so king g5 and if king goes away or bishop goes away then f7 followed by f8 queen white wins so let's have a look on the other example positions of this kind are not always winning so low material actually gives the side which wants uh, to make a draw great chances to make it actually so the point here is to place the bishop and the king correctly and this example just shows us the main method of making a draw in such a situation so in the previous example the bishop was on the diagonal a to g8 here the bishop is placed much better so bishop goes to d7 here so the bishop is placed passively right if compared to a2 position maybe it looks like that in fact the bishop is better placed exactly here so black still controls e6 square with both the bishop and the king but here we can see the difference if compared to the position on a2 because bishop attacks f5 pawn and now we can see that well it's not possible for white to make a progress why because f6 of course leads to complete blockade it's clear e6 still leads to the sacrifice with the draw immediately and we know from the previous example that uh, to make a progress white needs to ensure the movement of the e5 pawn with the help of the king here we can see the king occupies f7 square so that f6 square is not possible to occupy with white's king so the only square from where it is possible to ensure the movement of the e5 pawn is d6 but the king can't get there because f5 is hanging so king goes to f4 and what black has to do here is just to stay and wait and it is possible to do so bishop goes to c8 king goes to e4 bishop goes to d7 and once the king tries to ensure the promotion of the e5 pawn getting to d5 and then d6 or just uh, to d5 it is enough bishop immediately takes f5 pawn and it is a dead draw with a single pawn on the board so a great idea to make a draw in such a situation is to place the bishop the way like here so to prevent the movement of one of the pawns and to attack another pawn so that it is not possible for the king to leave this pawn hanging at the same time it is important to place your king correctly so here the king is placed correctly because it prevents white's maneuver of the king right so if uh, it is possible for white to make a maneuver of the king ensuring the promotion or at least a movement one step forward of one of the pawns still protecting the pawn which is attacked by the bishop like here it is king f4 king g5 in this case the king should occupy the square exactly preventing this sort of maneuver so the opposite position i mean with the bishop on f7 and king on d7 will be completely wrong because in that case well first of all the bishop doesn't attack the pawn and uh, second of all king doesn't cover f6 square okay let's have a look on the other example which shows that this basic drawish pattern doesn't work in each and every case what we did with the previous position from the previous example to achieve this one we just shifted it one rank towards the promotion squares uh, for white pawns and we can see that now white pawns occupy the sixth rank instead of the fifth rank like in the previous example and this appears just fatal for black because now the bishop has no space for maneuvering so let's have a look let's say black does exactly the same like in the previous example so bishop goes to d8 and at first glance it looks everything very good for black because bishop controls e7 attacks f6 so the king has no chance to occupy d7 square or d6 to help the pawn to be pushed to be promoted but after king f5 let's say king goes to e8 bishop goes to b5 with check and king f8 
White doesn't really need this maneuver of the king somewhere, White simply waits. And appears that black is in Zugzwang. We saw a very similar situation in the very first example of this lesson. And uh, here we can understand why the weakest side loses this sort of positions, because to perform an efficient defense, the bishop needs at least one more square to maneuver, right? Because king can't go away and the bishop should remain on the same diagonal. Here it is not possible. So either the bishop or the king should move. In both cases, white simply pushes the e pawn. Let's say king g8, e7, bishop takes e7, pawn takes e7, king goes to f7 and e8, queen. If on the second move after king f5, black's king goes to g8, it is actually the same. At first glance, it looks like white can just uh, push the pawn immediately, but well, it's better not to do that because it might be tricky. So after e7, there is a possibility of taking on e7. And if you take the bishop, then uh, king goes to f7. And actually your pawn drops. And intermediate check here doesn't really help. So bishop c4, the king simply goes to protect the bishop and it is a draw already. So after king g8, it is still better just to control the square of the promotion with the bishop b5 move. And after king f8, we have the same took swung after bishop to a4. So to perform a good defense against two connected passed pawns, the weakest side has to stop those pawns on the fifth rank. So if these pawns occupy the sixth rank already, there is no way to save the game. So if white performs a correct movement of those pawns, occupying correct squares, preventing complete blockade, then it's possible to win such a position with the help of Zugzwang. The next example will show us that knowing the pattern can uh, help you with making correct decisions. In this position, we can see that uh, white is about to occupy e5 square with the pawn, after which there will be this pattern that we discussed uh, deeply during this uh, lesson. So two connected past pawns in the fifth rank, which is already quite dangerous. So to perform a good defense, black has to demonstrate the knowledge of the main defensive pattern. So the bishop has to uh, stop the movement of one of the pawns and at the same time to attack another pawn. It is easy to make a correct move here knowing this pattern. So bishop goes to e8 and after white plays e5, bishop is placed on f7, exactly doing what we discussed. So attacking d5 and stopping e5 with the help of the king, of course. So the bishop b4, king goes to d7, and after king d4, black has the possibility to put the bishop on g8, the only square from where the king can ensure the uh, promotion of the e5 pawn is f6, but king can never get there because king is pinned to protecting d5 pawn. Thanks a lot for your attention. See you next lessons.